Welcome to Insights. I'm Eric. Thanks for stopping by. We're going to do an update to, uh, to the corn report. I'm going to try and keep a little bit of this open uh, for people to uh, try and get an idea of what these reports are all about now post them in the corn review. But we're going to take a look at uh, the overall trend that we're seeing really not only in just corn but across the grain markets. There's been a lot of talk. Uh, again, it's uh, it's, you're being dragged into this conversation if you're a trader just because of what the matrix is saying and been doing. Uh, it's been doing roughly about 15 to 17 months. It's it's not because somehow I was born and bred uh, to be a, a commodity trader. I just follow what the matrix tells us and, and so do others that are subscribers and we're participating in this space because it's it's where the action lies. So in order to understand uh, any market, and we're going to be talking about corn, we need to study it in terms of the evolution of the trade, its flow between between the three time frames, which you can see here is triple up. It's been up uh, for nine days, uh, but uh, there are some uh, growing problems within it, and we're going to discuss some of those. We're also interested in corn in particular, and I, it's because it's the leader, and we're going to talk about that inside the grain market for beans and wheat and I know how lo everyone loves to play in the leadership group it's a bit dangerous uh, and we're going to talk about why that that is and we're going to look at other markets uh, as a as a means of winning when to shift between the two I suspect everybody will be bullish corn when it's time to shift to other markets but that's just how it goes and it doesn't even matter what I say here it's most people are going to do what they believe and they're not going to follow, uh, you know, the cycles and the intermarket flows like we are. But we're just going to keep uh, I'm just going to keep pointing towards the things that I'm seeing and hope, hopefully in time it'll help redirect those who are also playing in these markets or producing these markets or or involved with any aspect of them. So if we take a look at corn. Anyone who's familiar with reviews knows that this is triple up. That means we have three time frames up. Uh, that's one of the reasons why the markets themselves are doing well. There's a lot of discussion about this because we're looking specifically at beans. Um, soybeans is the play in the grain market, and it's uh, mostly because the composite trend is much earlier. It, it, this one we can see is already mid cycle. The X bar is 0.92, which means that it's almost one, which means that this is going to flip to a late. So there is no viable play in corn shorter term. And we're going to look at some of the dangers that we're seeing across the time frames. Uh, but I think I want to keep part of this open and we're going to keep this a basic discussion so everyone gets a look. And then we're going to dig down deeper in the report section. And that's where really the information comes that, that, that we're really digging for. And then I guess we're really going to see the risks that I'm talking about. In terms of the sticks, we can see the price sticks, and this is corn, the ETN. It's not the futures market. It's futures market has rollover and it has numerous contracts. This is kind of like the continuous contract. This is uh, uh, what I considered merged with the continuous contract that we have back. Uh, we have uh, the continuous contract data back to 1959. It, it also uh, pulls in from databases that go back into the 1850. I think it's about 1845. Uh, and, and so we use all of that. But this is the daily chart. And I know everybody only cares about the daily charts. Everybody cares about short term price action. But careful, you cannot live in the short term without understanding the intermediate and long term and the very long term. They're all they're all related to one another. And the vast majority of the people who uh, probably stay in the, day, uh, the, the daily trend who don't understand the longer time frames are going to become the bag holders when the longer term cycles uh, shift on them. But we are approaching uh, the top of the end of the trading range and I'm going to suggest that this trading range has already been broken. When we slide down to the reversals we can easily see that the reversal tab is right here. I look at all three time frames. Uh, the most important for us is usually the weekly and the monthly. And you can see, and I pulled the monthly over, and we'll go back here. I pulled the monthly over, and that's this reversal box. Price of the uh, corn ETN is 20, 2241. And we already climbed above the 21 handle. You can see that. There's, uh, there's some uh, uh, highlights here, like these lines, these green lines. They re represent these zones here. And there's a 
quite a bit of zones and it's difficult to see them but they're all embedded in this uh, there's three of them right here but it's all right there in this line right there and we're now above that so technically corn has jumped the creek above that reversal zone it probably doesn't pick up until we clear up that swing high because that's what the rest of the world views but in terms of the computer it's already cleared the reversal zone and we are currently inside an air pocket between this uh, green line and this these red bands it's this distance the computer is not recognizing any supply and demand zones anything that would slow the price so the path least resistance is up and you're not going to find a lot of resistance to that and and it, it's it's an interesting play i think it's we are most likely going to test here um, but it does carry some risks to, 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 to driving higher that's why it's like I, I don't it's difficult to go out there and run and buy corn because of the way the cycles are and we're going to we're going to talk about those in a second but we are really making a run for the next band which is from 23 handle we're at 22 we're going from 23 up to about 20, it's it's just about 24 and then there's a some higher runs above 25 or it's about 25 and a half in terms of making this run from here to here inside the air pocket we're going to have to use energy to do that and the energy build is starting to get fairly bearish uh, it's not concentrated it was briefly but it bounced up uh, we, we rallied a little bit uh, but in general we're moving we're oscillating from a bullish buy that's what we had it's the same bullish area that sent up uh, soybeans except soybeans energy build was much greater it's it gives and it gives soybeans a much better play than corn but that's uh, that's you can go watch the soybeans reviews and reports for a further conversation on that but so corn had an energy build too much smaller one it's now dissipating and it's oscillating into a bearish setup it is this bearish setup that's going to place a blocking dome but what i guess the point is is inside this air pocket from here to get up into these zones the energy build is not a bearish concentration there's nothing there to stop it yet we have less room it would be much better if these two numbers di is uh, blue and di2 is is yellow it would be much better if both of these were higher and we were heading lower we're awfully close to the minus 60 but there's still some there's still some room for this to travel lower and it's going and actually can go lower than minus 60 so there is some room for this to for for price to make this run into the next layer of resistance into these overhead reversals but it's not it's not as much as you would think it'd be and that's why it, it, this it can't be an overwhelming bullish endorsement but then again it's not my endorsement it's what the computer is saying there's just not a lot of energy there's far more energy in soybeans and the relative play is going to be quite obvious soybeans will likely outperform these areas uh, in comparison because there's there's less uh, less work to to push it uh, any markets in terms of cycles and energy whichever one has the least amount of energy uh, money tends to flow towards uh, towards the higher energy and it'll tend to push those prices much faster corn has less energy at its disposal so it's going to be harder for it to push so it means has much more energy it'll be easier to push so you'll probably see a relative performance uh, advantage out of soybeans and this analysis applies to any market not just the grain markets any markets that it's inside the matrix the pro index is what we also look at and we've talked about this before in other markets you can catch them here so we pull this uh, he clicked those links uh, if you click this link right here you're going to get a chart that looks like this and you can see the professionals are driving the price higher that almost guarantees that price is going to jump the creek here i mean it has jumped the creek technically above reversal levels that people can't see but it's going to close above this swing high as long as professionals were buying it's it's actually surprising the retail money is not buying the corn market which um I'm, it's not surprising um I, all we care about is the pros anyways we don't have a a bearish energy bill to stop this but we do have bullish participation for professionals it's an excellent setup i mean it's but it, it's it's it has carries some of it it carries some risks and what we're going to talk about here uh going forward and, and this is going to have to go into the report grade is the cycles that are in existence anyone who, who subscribes to the review understands some of these but we have to go deeper and we also have to look at some of the intermarket trends that are in place and what are the real risks longer term to to to, to, 
to, not only to corn uh, and and what does that mean for markets that we're not talking about like wheat I and mean, wheat's uh, wheat's the market that no one seems to like and everyone's ignoring but yeah and it has one of the better longer term setups and we're gonna have to discuss why so really that's the setup for uh, uh, corn within the evolution of the trade we're not going to talk about the cycles here because it, it's going to get complicated and I have to talk about these numbers and the longer term trends and that stuff is report graded always is so I thank everybody for watching. I want to keep this an open review so everyone gets an idea of what's taking place not only in the corn market, but in the grain markets. And, and if you have any interest in this stuff, you have to subscribe to The Matrix, which gives you this in its full version. But you can track the three major markets. There's also other agricultural markets and, and energy and Forex and, and the stock market and Bitcoin, things of that nature. But in general, the same stuff that we talked about here applies to all markets. So if you have any questions, let us know. If not, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you guys real soon.